So uh, thank you guys for joining us. We're here at the Distribute Space uh, in the YouTube uh, studio, and we're so excited to be joined here by the founder of Startup Grind, uh, Derek Anderson. Derek, thanks so much for joining thanks. us. Thanks for having me. Awesome. So just to give a little bit of a, of, a, of a preview of what to expect here, we'll be talking about uh, distribution. So the I.O. space here is divided into three main areas. We got design, develop, and distribute. And we're here just to answer one simple question and get into it. Once you have a great product, what do you do with it to get it out there? How do you distribute it? And how do you make sure people know about it? And truthfully, I couldn't think of a better person to talk to about this than Derek, who has created something really special with Startup Grind. So why don't you go ahead and talk about it, and we'll dive into all the details. Uh, yes, yeah, Startup Grind is uh, a community of entrepreneurs trying to educate and connect uh, founders uh, across the world. So we have uh, local events that we hold in about 100 cities. Uh, our, whole, our whole program is actually powered by Google for Entrepreneurs, and uh, we have about 300 volunteers around the world that help us run our events and help build our community and, and just help, help entrepreneurs. And take me through, uh, Derek, for anybody who hasn't been to a Startup Grind event, take me through what exactly happens. I, w I walk in through the door, and then what? What, what should I The expect? first thing we do is we give you a watch. I thought you were going to say you give you all of our money. events, <laughs> um, tablets, uh, Swag, lots of shirts, <laughs> a lot of stickers. We give That's you all you just like this. It's exactly <laughs> like this. Uh, um, no, so we we host uh, really well-known, legendary founders and entrepreneurs and venture capitalists. We hear their stories. We have them tell us about you know the mistakes they've made and the the things that they've done right. And, um, and that's kind of part of the event. And then the other part is really trying to help you make friends. So Startup Grind's values are really simple. It's about giving more than you take. It's about helping others before you help yourself. And it's about making friends. You don't, you don't win an award at Startup Grind for getting the most LinkedIn connections. Uh, there's no award for the person with the most business cards. It's just who can you help and what can you do for the person sitting next to you in kind of a, a two or three hour time period. That's awesome. Um, and, and any stories of, of people who have met at startup grind events that have gone on to develop products together or? or uh... Yeah, well actually, so we started hosting events in my office with a, kind of a, a room of about this many people. And uh, one of the first events, I actually met a group of developers who had just started an agency and um, and we ended up working together for the next two years. We ended up doing all of our business together was working together and we, we had met at a startup grind. Uh, we've had entrepreneurs raise funding from speakers. We've had uh, entrepreneurs obviously join together and found teams together. Um, and then our community of 300 people who, who are really engaged with each other and we have very successful people and people just starting out. Um, and uh, we, host, we host the events in every city in the world. So if we don't have Startup Grind in your city, then email me at Derek at StartGrind.com. Let's do it. Um, but, uh, but those people are, are constantly working together. That's fantastic. So uh, a, a big reason why I'm so excited to have you is not just to hear about all your experiences, but because I feel like you've spoken to so many entrepreneurs that you know about how they've gotten their products out there, how they've shared their message, and how they've gotten users to sign up. So what, uh, what's an example of of, of a startup that you're really inspired by that, that you think has done a good job of distributing their product? I think uh, I love the story of Pinterest. Um, ben Silberman uh, told this story about two years ago where when they launched the company, it was basically like every other startup, like every startup I've ever started anyways, that when they launched, that it, that it, it, it got so few users that they were in stealth. They didn't mean to be in stealth, but it just was. Um, and really no one cared about it. And the first month they had 100 users, and then the second month they had 200 users, and the third month they had 400 users. And you think, well, that's not growing very fast, but they doubled every month for 18 months. And um, you know, if you do the math, you know, by the 18th month you're at about 500,000 users. And they've continued to just grow in that kind of exponential growth. And um, you know, some of the early things that they did were they kind of seeded it a little bit non-traditionally. They're based, they were based in Palo Alto to start in Silicon Valley, but they went to kind of two mommy blogger communities. They went to uh, Iowa, which is where Ben was from, and so he had like a community there. He had connections there. They kind of seeded it with, with 
kind of female bloggers. And then they went to Utah, which has this big female blogging contingency as well. And he spoke at blogging conventions and conferences and met with these people. And um, you don't hear about many high-tech Silicon Valley companies yeah. kind of going to Utah and going to Iowa to find early adopters for their product. Yeah, and really interact with their users like from the onset. Um, and so can you talk about how, uh, you know, uh, moving away from the stories of other entrepreneurs, but how did, how did so take me through Startup Grind day one, you said uh, it started off as a very small group. How did it expand and, and did it start out as your main thing? Did it start out as a side project? Tell us everything about how it got off. Yeah, the I, so I, I worked at Electronic Arts, I quit my job, started building products and failing kind of more and more spectacularly every <laughs> six months. And while I was doing that, a friend and I started hosting these events. And um, there wasn't really anything to it. It was just us getting together and helping each other. But after a year and a half, we were getting 250 people coming every month. And with really with no effort, all of our effort was in the companies we were trying to run. Um, and what has started happening is I started people attending that would say, hey, can I do this in my city? And, you know, I thought that was a horrible idea. And, but I said, we have nothing to lose. Like we don't, there's nothing here, it's just this thing that we don't really care about. But it seems to help a lot of people, so just do it and hopefully we won't get sued or something. <laughs> and, and what ended up happening was it, it worked in LA, it worked in New York. And a couple of the things that we did very early in terms of distribution, um, you know, uh, today we get about 100 inbound requests a month to start new chapters. In the beginning, no one cared. And so, honestly, like, we would do anything that we could possibly do to start a new chapter. I mean, if I'm, since Silicon Valley is positioned as like the melting pot of the startup world, every event that we have in Silicon Valley, about half the audience is from somewhere other than Silicon Valley. And so, we started to pull from those people and say, well, look, if, if you're here, you've seen the experience, you hopefully enjoyed it, you should do this in your city. And, and the first 20 chapters, I really, it was me finding people at our events and, then, and me convincing them that this was a good idea for them to spend their time doing. There was, there was no reason to do it. Um, uh, we have someone here today who started our, our, Brian Park, who started our DC chapter. And I met him at my event. I then saw him at TechCrunch a few days later. I literally begged him. He was a good person. He had the same values as me. He, he was really wanted, passionate about helping entrepreneurs. He said, please, you have to do this. This will help you. And he did it. And he's, he, in the last two years, has built an amazing community in Washington, D.C. But for the first 20 cities, it was really blood, sweat, and tears, begging, pleading, selling you know, people on that this was something good for them. And we knew that it was, but we had to convince them. And, and once we kind of hit 20 cities, you know, the, the ball started to roll. And um, you know, to a couple years later, we're now getting, we only approve about 10% of the inbound requests for new chapters. Used to be 100%. We would approve anyone. Anyone that would touch it, you were in. And you know? how, did you, how did you make that process so selective? Or like, how do you go about making sure that the person who evangelizes startup grind is the, is the right fit? Uh, so you know that the users that they bring on uh, are the right ones for the startup right well, like, values. Well, like any good product, I mean, you don't even, you don't really know what you're creating. I mean, this was a big accident. A lot of the, the best products are just complete accidents, you know? Um, and uh, I don't know if we're in the best product category, but like, this was not the startup. And so uh, we just, we tested every, every new city we had was a new, uh, you know, Petri dish for us to test. And we tried 100 different things, 100 different ways. And then once we had all that data across, you know, 10 or 15 cities, we said, okay, here's the roadmap. We can, you know, we have what we can kind of cookie cut out and, and replicate this across the world. And every six months, our process completely changes. So we've now been doing it for about two years full time. And every couple of months, we start all over again. And how do we do this? How do we look at this? How do we organize it? How are we going to motivate people? How are we going to help entrepreneurs? We, we, we rethink everything, um, and that's just a very iterative process that most entrepreneurs probably experience in their companies. Derek, I love how you call it an accident, uh, the, the start of Startup Grind. And I want to talk about what entrepreneurs or developers here today can do to maybe take an online presence or an online app and move it into the offline world so you could have people connect 
in real time like you did and, and just starting this community as an offshoot to the start of your working on what what would you recommend for people here today who are developing something and looking to allow people to connect in the real world in real time well um, you if you're not building doing events I, you know you becoming the event person is probably not a good use of your time but there are there are a lot of people doing things offline there are a lot of great events there are a lot of great communities all those people want to work with companies that have the same values of, as them and have the same mindset as them um, you know I think if, if you're an entrepreneur in you know it's so important to get your product in people's hands to physically watch them using your product film it talk to them and um, one thing that I found is you know this I've had products that were my babies you know and nothing nothing could be wrong with that child you know um, you know don't you know it had six toes but don't don't you better not say anything about it you know it was bald but you know it's it's beautiful it's the most amazing but you know with 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 startup grind for me there's no personal agenda it's all what do the users want what do entrepreneurs want how can I help entrepreneurs more and if that's something completely different we'll do it and um, and I think is you're looking at well how do we get it into people's hands how do we talk to you about it you know look for companies look for groups that a you want to aspire to be like so people that make you look better but also that you can add value to and that could be a sponsorship that could be a partnership that could be you know you you bring your users to them but um, you know go look for people that are like you and that make you look better and then uh, find ways to make those people look good through what you're doing and if you can if you can look at what's in it for this person I know it's in it for me but what's in it for them and how can I make them look good then you may be able to do some 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 meaningful partnerships so let's, let's talk a little bit more about partnerships you've been able to put it together a terrific one with Google for entrepreneurs it's obviously taken a long time to develop uh, I know in catching up the other day, you were talking about a uh, partnership that Electronics Arts developed when you were working uh, in the digital space over there. Can you give a story about how when an app was coming out, uh, either that you were working on or that you were, uh, uh, you know, uh, heard about closely, like wh how did they distribute in their first days? What partnerships did they get um, and how did they get their app out there? So if you're, a, if you're an early stage startup, um, you know, you have nothing a lot of times to give. You know, there's not a lot of value that you have because you have no users, uh, you have limited traction, you, you have all these things against you. And so one thing that you can do is look at other startups who are in the same position and try to work with them. And, you know, you want one plus one should always equal five or it's not worth doing. And so um, if one plus one equals 1 1.5 or one plus one equals two, keep moving, keep thinking, keep looking. Um, but one thing that one thing that this was several years ago but this is right when the Facebook uh, marketplace became available but uh, the this kind of this startup emerged that was just a kind of a toolbar at the top of apps that would market five or ten different games and basically all of those startups would opt in and say yes we will we will add this toolbar to our to our uh, you know to our app and then we'll all kind of help each other market our products they you could say, well, they compete with each other. They compete with t for time, but they weren't the same game. But they were, they were games, and so they had the same kind of customer base. You later then saw people like Zenga or EA or other people create their own to cross promote their own games. But that was to me a very innovative way for startups to kind of help each other who didn't who didn't have any sort of distribution or you know didn't have any traction. Um, when you start working with bigger companies like a Google or a Kauffman Foundation or um, an Apple or Facebook, you know it's it's a different position because you need to make sure that again you have something to offer. And so, for in in our case with Google, uh, we had been going for uh, two years before we ever even approached them. Two and a half years, and when we approached them, we said, "Look, we've done hundreds of events. You're doing." hundreds of events. This can really add to your mission and we're aligned in our values and our goals and we said we can add this to what you're doing. We know what Google could add to us. It's yeah. pretty obvious. There's lots of great things Google can do for us but what could we do for Google? And um, we can't help Google a lot but we can do our own little things and support and so that conversation um, you know was much easier because we had those we were thinking about them and they were thinking about us and then with that you've also 
you've got to be thinking about, do I have the time and energy to fight this thing out? And a, a deal with a big company might take six months. It might take nine months, even if you look great from day one. If you don't look great, you might be a year or a year and a half. And so you have to be ready to last that full length of time and to be able to you know, patiently wait for those people to come around or you might waste your time or you might waste their time or you might just, you might just kind of run out of, of juice on it. Yeah, no, I, I, love, I love your note about the patience of working with big partners, but also the, the scrappiness of bringing little uh, uh, partners together and, and creating your own distribution network. I think so many times as startups you think, oh, you know, we don't have the leverage, there's all these uh, Goliaths out there and we're just a bunch of Davids here who can't uh, distribute and partner to help one another. But I think the example you gave is beautiful in that you can approach other products, other developers and try to cross promote to help one another out. Um, so is there any other tips you would give to an entrepreneur starting in day one or, or anything looking back at your uh, career as, a, as, a, as an entrepreneur? Hey, I, I would do this differently or, or here's a specific piece of advice that I would give to a developer who may have been in my shoes a few years ago. Well, when I started building products, I wrongly just kind of said, this is my vision. This, I know that people want this. I'm just going to build it. So, um, and, and I think, uh, you know, as, as I mentioned earlier, getting customer feedback, developing hand-in-hand -hand with users, with people that actually need the product. But then also, as you're thinking about the product and you're thinking about your team, are you also thinking about your distribution strategy? Or do you have a cohesive plan for how are we going to get to a million page views? Or how are we going to get to 100 customers? Or we just had this great talk from, uh, from uh, Sean from Tinder who said um, the first day when, they, when the product was ready, he made everyone in the room send a text message to 100 people. That's a very simple, tangible thing they could do. And then they went to colleges and they got the key influencer at each college and had them share with all their friends. That's a very simple, easy way to grow and to, to get to some sort of critical mass. Totally. And if you're a startup, you don't need a lot of money. You don't need to spend on AdWords yet. <laughs> um, you don't, you, you know, you just need to come up with a simple creative way to get enough users and customers to start to get some traction and show you have momentum. And then if you do that, everything else will follow. Investors will follow, cash will follow, team will follow, all these other things will follow. But if, if you have a great product, which is pretty difficult, um, and then on top of that, a great distribution strategy, uh, then people, people might actually see your product. You might, you might become noticeable, you might get out there. That's awesome. So I, I want to close with one last question, then I want to open it up to you guys to be able to ask Eric. I, I asked Derek uh, any questions about uh, startup grind, distribution, et cetera. But uh, Derek, as you move into the future, how do you view startup grinds, expansion, and growth on a global basis? I mean, your, your numbers are astonishing. Over 75,000 uh, entrepreneurs uh, impacted at your events at, uh, at over 100 cities across the globe. How do you how do you keep up that growth rate and what are your plans for the future to continue growing? Well, I got, I got some really good advice from someone named George Zachary who's one of the first investors in Yammer and Twitter and he said, uh, growth for growth's sake is pointless. And so, um, you know, getting, for us, getting to 100 more cities or 1,000 cities, what's the point? Um, I think for us it's the question that we ask ourselves just about more than anything else is, how can we help entrepreneurs more today than we did yesterday? And, um, and, and, and there are 400 million entrepreneurs, so there's plenty, plenty to help. There's, yeah. we have, we've had help 75,000, that's like <laughs> nothing, yeah. you know? And so, um, so what can we do to improve that help, to scale up that help, to, um, to really make, make entrepreneurs su successful? And you know, that's what we're trying to do, so. Awesome. So with that, uh, we'll open it up to Q&A uh, from the audience if you guys have. Um, Hold on. I've got a mic right here. I'll get you a mic. Uh, what's your monetization of Startup Grind? Is it now or in the future or combination? Yeah, so our, our monetization model is very simple. And it's, uh, it's that we, all of our events are paid events and uh, we have sponsors and partners that help support the event. So uh, it's, you know, we're not an incubator, we're not an accelerator. Uh, in a world where everybody asks you to give them a piece of your company, uh, our goal is just to 
to help and to support and to give you connections and give you education and uh, and to you know to do that at, at kind of a you know at a ticket price or a sponsorship price so it's as simple as that Uh, do you ask for anything from the companies that you help, like in the future, like once they grow, do you ask for like a percentage of their profits or anything like that? Will you give us a percentage of your <laughs> profits? We will take them if you'll give them to us. Um, we don't. So I, I, it's kind of this, re I, I don't know if it's revolutionary, it just seemed like the best thing to us to do, but um, we just, we support, but we think entrepreneurs should control their own companies. Most Most companies are are bootstrapped in the world. You know, not in Silicon Valley where we are, but most company most entrepreneurs bootstrap their companies. They have to figure it out. They have to get friends and family, you know, to help them. They have to save their money. They have to uh, live in their garage, you know, or their I was gonna say their mom's <laughs> garage, but live in live in their apartment and work out of their apartment for a long time to get things going. Um, so we think entrepreneurs should keep their equity and uh, and you know should spend it on getting great teams and and uh, getting great people involved in it and for us it's it's about just providing that education layer and helping in that way uh, so uh, when did you decide to leave your full-time job at EA and then uh, you know go into startup grind full-time so uh, I it kind of took me about two years I I'm, I'm married and uh, have an amazing wife and uh, but it kind of took me two years to convince her that I that quitting my job was a good idea. And we, we did that six weeks after we had our first son, wow. which is probably like the worst time <laughs> you could possibly quit your job. Um, and then started, I built about five or ten different products in the two years before I started working on Startup Grind full time. So I was not, I did not quit to do Startup Grind. I quit to do a number of other things that you've never heard of, um, and which I hope you won't dig up from my past. Um, but uh, Startup Grind, as it, it just was very natural, it was very ev uh, evolutionary. And over two years, it, it became the startup. And so, um, you know, if you're going to quit your job, uh, save your money and get your wife as your co-founder <laughs> or your husband. Um, because they're as important as anything you do is getting your family, you know, on board that, look, this is going to be a long journey. This is going to be tough. This isn't going to be stable like what I've been doing. Um, you jump off the cliff and you build the parachute on the way down uh, is, is, a, is kind of a good explanation of what it, what it felt like for me. Hi. Um, what are the bars for opening a new chapter? Uh, for example, a number of attendees, something like that. And how independent these new chapters are? Do you guys like, you know, do they have freedoms over sponsors or you know, accepting sponsors or something like that? So the the bars for starting a new chapter are uh, you have to put a plan together, and the the most important thing, really, the only major bar is that you have to share the same values as us. And so, if you share those values and we think you can actually execute it. Um, the size of the city doesn't matter. The country doesn't matter. We do it in 42 countries. We're, we're going to have our first event in Iran next month. Wow. Uh, we're going to be. We're in Georgia. We're in the Congo. We're in Nairobi. I just spoke with somebody from our Nairobi chapter that's here at Google I/O, wow. which was pretty cool. Um, so, uh, but it's just, are you? Do you have the same mindset as us? And can you lead a community in the way that we know it needs to be led to be successful? And uh, every what we found is kind of if you get those people in place. Everything else just kind of works out. That's awesome. oh. Two questions. Uh, first, uh, do you have competition? And if so, what does that look like? Uh, and the other question is, you know, that you have insight into uh, many, many companies, obviously, and I'm sure people that you're connected with throughout this startup grind say, oh, I just saw something really great, or I know guys that are looking for investment. Do you partner with venture capital groups? Do you do your own investments? And also, are you still pursuing your own products? You seem like an idea guy. And uh, do you see something go, oh, oh, I can do it? So, a couple questions. Okay. So, uh, on the competition front, um, there, there are other great events or communities that um, sometimes compete a little bit for time with entrepreneurs, but 
I wouldn't look at them as competitive to us. I mean, we like Up Global is a great example of a great community that helps entrepreneurs all over the world. Um, they're kind of similar to us, but we we work together and partner together. Um, you know, Google for Entrepreneurs does lots of things for entrepreneurs. You could say, well, that's kind of competitive, but really this space is interesting because it's very socially driven. You know, people that are are kind of have a social driven purpose, and so we're helping a hundred hundred thousand entrepreneurs and. If you're helping a million, then great. We're all just trying to help. There's so many entrepreneurs that, um, so, so comp competition maybe not the right word, but there are other people that are helping entrepreneurs in great ways. And then um, in terms of the, uh, what was the other question? The, oh, oh, the VCs, yeah. Yeah, so I am not an investor, no. I am absolutely not an investor. Um, I'm just an entrepreneur. I, wanna, I hope I can be an entrepreneur for 30 years. Like there's this really, what I think is a negative trend of, of like, when I make it as an entrepreneur, like I'm gonna become an investor so I can get more rich and like work less. Um, and uh, I, hope, I hope I always am an entrepreneur. I hope I always have the energy to be an entrepreneur. I'm not sure I will, but I, I don't know what else I'll do, but hopefully I can last 30 years as an entrepreneur. I can't lose any more hair, so that's, that's <laughs> at least I know that. And we do see great companies and we love to just connect them. We don't take a percentage, we're not brokers. Uh, we just try and support great entrepreneurs. That we don't introduce everyone to everyone. But uh, you know, when we see a great company, we absolutely will in introduce them to our speakers. And, and, um, and for me, um, you know, the, the purpose, like I, I do have ideas on things to do, but the purpose of, at least for me being an entrepreneur, was always to find something I could focus on and just do full heartedly. So, for several years, it probably looked like I was very sporadic and scatterbrained and made some of you in this position because you don't want to put all your chips on black on that one bet. And so you spread a little bit to like make sure you got other doors. But at some point, you've got to put all your chips on the table on the right bet. And so for me, that came about two years ago with Startup Grind. And it wasn't, we had three chapters. It wasn't like, this is for sure going to like do something cool. It was this seems like the right thing to do. I'm finally going to go all in on this. I'd gone all in on other things, but I'm just going to go all in on this. And um, I hope I do this for a really long time. I, I, uh, I'm very focused on, on the mission and the, the values of what we're doing. And um, so I actually, I have ideas, but I kind of suppress them or I give them to some, I, talk, I brainstorm with entrepreneurs and that's a way for me to be creative outside of, you know, just being creative in what we're doing. So with that, I just want to thank Derek for your time. Great. Thank, thank you, so you very much. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. Very much. Thank you.